Hello YouTube, my name is Paul. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another pickup video. See what crap I've picked up over the last few weeks. Um, I know I've said it in the past, but the, the pickups are now slowing down, um, which is great, to be completely honest with you. Um, so I am running out of room for a start. And I've got quite a lot of duplicates that I need to get rid of and get listed on eBay. I know there's a few Hit Squad games there I've offered out to the lads. I think there's nothing there that they don't have. Um, the problem with buying Hit Squad games, you end up buying a bundle of, say, 25 games, and you only want one of them. So, yeah, and as the, the Hit Squad collection is now dwindling down to literally the teens, um, I'm not really getting much more in the post at the minute. Um, so, yeah, some Atari titles here, not after many more. I've got another two more, which hopefully would have got to me before this video, but unfortunately it didn't. Um, got some ST games on the way, which I've probably got about 40 to 50 ST games to show you in, in sort of... Uh, future videos. The Amiga is again slowing down, but I have again similar sort of amount to show you in later videos. And the Spectrum is really, really is slowing down at the minute, apart from Hit Squad, which is really good. The first game I've got to show you then is on the Atari. It's a game that I don't remember very well until I started playing it. I thought I remember this bloody game, but I don't know how I remember it. It might be from the arcade original, or it might just be from the good old Atari. That's Carnival, which is an arcade port from Sega. Uh, again in decent condition, this one popped up I think for about 12 quid. I'm sure it's including free post. So I thought why not? But yeah it's one of those games that if you were uh, playing at a fair with your rifle, shooting the ducks or shooting whatever you got to shoot to win a prize, it's exactly like that. As you go, as you progress like all the other Atari games, it just gets a little bit more quicker. Um, a few more enemies on screen but yeah you got to Keep your energy from dropping off the screen. I'm not sure what the energy represents, but you need to pick up or shoot certain objects to keep that timer topped up. The game is obviously very repetitive. It doesn't get any different, but I quite like it. It's quite a nice pick up and play. And you don't need to use much brain power to play it. So that's the first Atari game I've picked up. And the second one I picked up was a game I completely forgot about until I saw the artwork. And it's another Activision game. Now, I've got a common theme of Activision games at the minute. They'll play a very, in a very similar style, the ones I've got anyway. That's Barnstorming. Again, in fair condition, this one's been under the iron, just to make sure it's uh, flattened out. And I do need to get myself some dedicated Activision cases, because these are the ones that are dedicated to the actual full-size Atari boxes. I'm not sure you can quite see it in the picture without all the mega glare. The boxes are slightly bigger. Uh, sorry, slightly smaller than the... Um, Atari or CBS boxes. Now, Barnstorm is one of those games, a bit like Grand Prix, a bit like Dragster. You, you're just trying to play the game in the quickest time possible. So with this one, all you're doing is literally going through barns, above pylons, back down again, through barns. Um, that is about it. That's the only level I've played. And I can't believe I completely forgot about it. So the game itself, yeah, you're, just pitting, you're just pitting yourself against yourself, really. Same as Grand Prix, the same as Dragster. But yeah, really pleased to get this one, finally. Uh, again, the International Edition. Uh, I think this one set me back something like £9.27, but I don't think that included post. So it's probably a very similar price to Carnival. But really pleased to have it. I'm only now looking for a handful of games like Boxing, um, Kaboom, I think the other one is. Uh, Cosmic Arc, uh, Pitfall, Pitfall 2, Hero. A few others that the guys have mentioned in previous videos, like Smurf and all. So yeah, I am keeping my eye out for them, as long as they come in reasonably decent condition. And for a decent price. That's my two Atari pickups, which take me to about, I think it's 29 games now. But again, it's not many more that I want. And thankfully, they're a reasonable price. Now the next batch of games are all Commodore. So the next two are Commodore 16. And my old mate Sam, back in sort of mid-86, had a Commodore 16. Just before I got my, my own computer, the old ZX Spectrum. I used to have cracking games on it that I remember, like Trailblazer, which was a cracking little game. They had some really bad ports of Paperboy, Green Beret, they were dreadful on the C16. They had quite a few Mastertronic games. So you had Storm, and a couple of games I'm going to show you now. One isn't very good, but I just remember the artwork. And that's Mr. Puniverse. Now, back in the day, Mastertronic used to have games. They weren't necessarily released across all formats, but this was kind of, I think it was C16 specific. I don't think it came out on the Spectrum. It may have come out on the uh, 64. I don't really know. But this game's a platformer. It's a dreadful platformer at that. And I wasn't very good at it. As you can see from the video clip, I got bloody stuck. 
But again, this game would have cost you only 199 originally back in sort of 85, 86. It's good to have it back in the collection because the artwork alone is very nostalgic. It just reminds me of my good friend Sam. Who I've not really seen that for a long time. As a postman, that's probably the Atari games arriving that I can no longer talk about. So they can wait to the next pickup video. Next up is probably one of the best games released on the Commodore 16. Uh, and this one definitely reminds me of Sam because this used to go on about this game all the bloody time. That's Tutti Fruity. It is arguably one of the best games on the system, to be honest with you. That's not bad. Not a bad accolade for a 199 game. Again, it's um, like Dig Dug. I'm not really very familiar with the arcade original, but I'm pretty sure it's a Dig Dug clone. Um, one I'm not very good at. I can get to about the third level on this. I had a clue what I was flipping doing. But the first level, we're just going through, the, going through the maze, picking up the strawberries, dropping the apples on the baddies' heads or shooting them. Whichever is more convenient. The second level is much the same. The third level, I didn't have a flipping clue. Because you couldn't pick anything up. That's Tootie Fruity, a cracking little game. Cracking little tune. You wouldn't believe you were playing it on a Commodore 16, to be honest. Now, the next three games are all games by Ocean Software. And these are clamshell variants that didn't come out in the Sinclair Spectrum. I'm after a few. I've got the three I've already got to show you. Uh, I think there's two more, maybe three more clamshell cases to get for the C64. And I'm pretty sure I'm done with the Commodore 64. Except for the nostalgic games that I'm, I'm, I can barely remember now, to be completely honest. And the first one is Rambo, First Blood, Part 2. It's quite cool, so I've been going through the Rocky films recently. So I had never seen the Creed films. I thought I'd go right through the Rocky series and watch the two Creed films. But this is a very good game. I mean, it's, it's better than the Spectrum version, which was very buggy. I remember the Spectrum version, you shot the helicopter, the game would crash. And that's what I used to always do, and I can never understand why it used to freeze. The Commodore 64 version has got some fantastic music by Martin Galway. Uh, you've got energy in it, which the Spectrum version didn't have energy, just flipping dies straight away. And it's much the same, really. You just go along um, a large map, really. You've got to save POWs, get the helicopter, pick the POWs up, or something like that. And that's the end of the game. This one comes complete with instructions and cassette. But I do much prefer the C64 version over the Spectrum version, to be completely honest. Even though the specky version holds a lot of nostalgia. That's Rambo, First Blood, Part 2. Good film too. Right, next up, another clamshell ocean game. This one is Kong Strikes Back, which has got a weird twist to the game, really. Again, these games are dirt cheap. You're looking at two or three quid, including post. Um, but a very strange twist on it. Because you've got a fairground. And you've got to go around the roller coaster. Not that I could get off the first level. To complete it, and I think you pick up. I can't, I don't even know what you even pick up. It's a very strange looking icons, icons, sprites on the screen you pick up. Um, shooting bombs. I don't really get the game to be honest. I've only played it for literally five minutes, but it's nothing like Kong, which is obviously a Donkey Kong ripoff. So yeah, a bit of an ocean, uh, bit of an ocean original really, using the name Kong. I can't really say too much about that one. I don't have a lot of memories of it at all. And again, like I said, I played it for a little bit and I weren't overly keen, to be honest. Whereas the next one, it's Hunchback 2, Quasimodo's Revenge. Now, another arcade release. And I didn't realise the arcade original was a British arcade cabinet as well, which is pretty funky because there's not really many British arcade cabinets out there. Now, this is the second part of the original arcade machine. That's the first part, which is called Hunchback. Second one's Hunchback 2, Quasimodo's Revenge. But... It is the second half of the arcade games. This is a bit of a platformer. I can't get off the second level. It reminds me a little bit in some ways of games like Chucky Egg and all the rest of it. You sort of go along picking up bells, climbing the rope till you reach the top of the bell tower. So I think there must be about four or five levels and that's pretty much it. But yeah, it comes complete with instructions. And that's it really. So again, another cheapy game. This one sort of works. I think ran by test it didn't work unfortunately. So I have to pick up another copy of that but the two I'm after now is Tornado Low Level which came out un under the Ocean label on the Commodore 64 but came out under the Vortex label on the Spectrum and Amstrad and I'm after Transformers as well which came out in the old clam case probably slightly more expensive than these but nothing um, nothing too too expensive probably about five or six quid uh, the next game is a game I bought after watching Let's Talk Retro's video I quite like the look of this game. I've tested it, but I've not really played it. That's Man Cave, which is a recent 
uh, recently developed game. What's fantastic about this particular modern day game is still in a clan case. So I think it's fantastic, a bit difficult to open. I love it how they keep the old authentic look to Commodore 64 games. Now, what struck me about this was the music, because you I think the first tune as you load it up is Bonnie Thailand, but it took me a little while to work out what the hell it was. And it's also got the tune in there from Men Behaving Badly, but it's, again, I'm not really sure what the game's about. I do need to sit down and play it. But it looked pretty impressive from what I saw on the lads' videos. But yeah, it's very much a platformer, but again, like I said, I haven't actually got stuck into it. This was about 12 quid, maybe 15 quid. I bought it from uh, an online store, which obviously stock. It's homebrew games. But yeah, fantastic. If I remember what the, the store is, I'll leave a link down in the description box below. But really pleased to have that. It's the first brand new homebrew game I've ever bought. I should buy more really to support what these guys are doing. Right, next up is a compilation. The reason I bought this compilation was for a video I did some time ago. Uh, and it's the only way you can buy this game on the Commodore 64. I think the only version that got a physical release on its own as a standalone game was the Amstrad version. I think it only got released in France. But this compilation is Adidas Championship Football. No, it's not. That's a flipping game. I don't actually say what the compilation is called. But that's the compilation anyway. So yeah, as you can see, it came free, I think, with the World Cup pack. World Cup 90 pack. Uh, but Beach Volley is the game on there that I wanted. Uh, the Spectrum version I had to buy from Spain under the Ubisoft label. And the only one I've got an original of is, is, is on the Amstrad. Very difficult to get. But this is obviously a very common compilation. Um... But yeah, not much to say about this particular pack, really. That's it. Only wanted one game out of it. Right, the next two items are highly nostalgic. Um, my friend who lived across the way from me had a Commodore 64. Probably the first home computer I've ever played on, to be honest. And he's the same guy who had a Vader modelled Atari uh, 2600. So when I used to go over his house, I used to play Commodore 64 games, but I can never remember what they were called. The only one I remember is Poster Paster, which was not a bad little game, to be honest. But this compilation just brought everything flooding back. Now, I've had this twice. One has got no instructions. Uh, one has got instructions. So it's called Mega Hits. Now, all these games bring back such nostalgic memories. It's unbelievable. And my friend, Nicky, he wasn't really a friend, I suppose, more of a neighbour, but he... Every time there was a, like a chart single release, he'd have it. He'd have like the flipping top. He must have had a top 40 for like 10 years of every single flipping song. Unbelievable. This guy, and he's also the same guy who used to go around the house and he used to be so many pirated VHS uh, videos. Because obviously back then, sort of mid-80s, uh, to buy a brand new film would have cost about 80 or 90 quid. Um, so no one ever bought them really until the late 80s when it became a lot cheaper. But he used to have every single film. Must have copied them, obviously. If you remember those VHS cassettes, they used to have these like fake, um, almost look like books. You put them in this case, close the case, it looks like a flipping binder or something, or a book. But you used to have shelves and shelves of them. But yeah, so that kind of reminds me of him, really, who, he wasn't a good mate of mine, but he was just someone that I knew. But yeah, I used to love playing the games. So games on here like Tales of Arabian Nights, I remember. But it's amazing what you forget, because I, f I forget the name of all these games. Apart from Poster Paster, Son of Blagger. Trolley Wally is a cracking game, which I got from Tootie about this time last year, funny enough. It's a cracking game, one of my favourite platformers. It's rock hard, but it's got so much nostalgia. Ultimania, another cracking platformer. You just have to go and build your cars. But yeah, so many great memories just in that one little compilation. Because at the time, a bit like my friend Sam with C16, I didn't actually have a computer of my own. Imagine being someone who's like got a really addictive personality and not being able to play these games. It used to drive me fucking insane. Right, next is another compilation. This is the Computer Hits, the original one. So I don't think there's any more that I really need. I think there's these two you had. I think you had a smaller one, which maybe had six games on it. But again, some classics in there like Brian Jack's Jack Superstar, which I think was one of the first multi-sport events games ever played. Uh, Seaside Special, which I completely forgot about. It's a funky old game. Gin Genie, Harrier Attack, and the classic Chucky Egg. We used to play Chucky Egg for flipping hours. That was some cracking game. But yeah, on the back of it, it's advertised the one I've already got, which I already showed you. But what a brilliant compilation. So I haven't tested these two, surprisingly, because I really would like to just 
listen to the sounds once again. It'll just take me back to a, I suppose, a happy time. I was only about 11, 12 years old when I played those. Right. Next up, another couple of Commodore 64 games. One's a replacement for a copy of this game that I sold about a year ago to pay for other things. And the other one I've been after for ages, and the sickening thing about the other one, I've seen it sell twice for £50 by it now, so the seller clearly didn't realise what they had. The first up is a Commodore 64 cart. I've got one more left to get, so I've got my full set back that I had. It's Navy Seals. Well, I mean full set, I mean full set Ocean Collection. Lovely condition. I think this one has set me back about 25 quid. Yeah, but it's really nice, Nick. Flipping tough game, no matter what you play it on. Um, but yeah, really pleased to have it back in the collection. I cannot get off level one. I've tried on the Spectrum, GX4000, and on, obviously on this. Um, comes complete with baggy and instructions, which is always great. But I think the Spectrum version was the only version I got a cassette release on the 8 bits. That's Navy Seals, so please have that on back in the collection. Next up is a game I've been after for ages. Um, it did come out on cassette as well on the Commodore 64. I recently sold a copy, I think, on the Spectrum. Now, this game came to me in decent condition. I put the iron, excuse me, I put the iron to it, but I did cause a bit of damage, which was bloody gutting. I've managed to kind of somehow wipe some of the black out, which ain't good. That game is Ninja Remix. I'm not sure you can see the sort of like white lines in here. Um, but yeah, of course, a bit of damage to it. This set me about 95 quid, I think. Which for itself is not a bad price because it can go for up to 150. But like I said, the last two I've seen sell on eBay, both went for 50 pounds by now. Gutted as hell. Uh, the box itself is not in bad nick. I managed to iron out one of the, one of the corners. It was a bit crushed. Like I said, caused a little bit of damage to the actual bloody box, which is typical and that's really put me off ironing boxes now um, especially for games that cost just nearly nearly 100 quid so yeah that, that's the games i'm going to show you this particular pickups because it kind of clears up all the commodore 64 games really i've also picked up some magazines so one of the magazines is a recent ish magazine uh, and i bought it specifically for the hit squad collection and ash funny enough mentioned this to me ash ate one before you very recently and that is I say last gamer then. Retro Gamer Magazine. I think it's the only copy I've, I've bought since the original 2 came out. About flipping 15, 16 years ago. But yeah, so in it, obviously, you've got a nice listing of all the Hit Squad titles. If I can find it. Yeah, so it's got a nice article there, obviously, from people that do collect for that particular collection. Um, I need some stronger glasses, I can't see a bloody thing. But five rarities is highlighted is Space Gun. And Space Gun, on a Spectrum anyway, the full price release is bloody hard to find. Dark Man, which is, again, tough to get. The Adams Family. And uh, then the Commodore 64, you've got European Rampage Tour, which I was going to bid on the other day, and I think it went for 50 quid in the end. And Lethal Weapon, which is probably the grail game for the um, Commodore 64. I've seen Space Gun, Dark Man, and Adam's Family for the C64. Never ever seen them for the Amstrad. Well, Space Gun obviously got a release on the Amstrad, but only in France. I don't think that Hit Squad title came out on the Amstrad at all. But yeah, it's quite cool, really. So it gives you a full breakdown of all the games and highlights which ones are available under which system. But it gives you the three main 8 bit systems. Doesn't really talk about the ST Amiga, BBC, and all the rest of them. So really pleased to have that. It's a, it's a fantastic guide. Right, next up, got to mention this one. This was a book I bought, which I must must have in the collection myself, being an ocean flipping fanboy. Hardback, which I've got the paperback already, but it's absolutely fantastic getting a hardback. There's so much in there. Unbelievable, really. It's, it's very well, I can't really see it, a very, very well presented book. Um, lots of accounts in there from all the programmers, the guys who obviously founded the company, musicians, artists, a lot. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Certainly worth picking up if you're interested in Ocean Software. Or well, in fact, the early days of sort of the computer industry in the UK. Because it is, it is sounded like it was so similar to sort of a Del Boy company. If Del Boy set up a software company in its early years, it probably would be like this. It's a cracking read. Right, three Amiga magazines. Um, 
I'm after a full set of all of them, so I've just accomplished one full set, which is fantastic. Uh, the other two are going to be really tough to get a full set, because a lot of the later magazines are so bloody hard to find. Now, first up is a, a bundle I recently got off of Cine Steve, which was an eBay purchase. Um, and that is the Amiga CD32 Gamer magazine. I think this is the only one I'm missing. I have to double check, just in case. Really pleased to have it, because there's only 22 issues. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the CD-ROM at the front. But yeah, I've, I've done, I think I've only ever seen this on eBay a couple of times. So I'm really, really pleased to have it. It probably would cost around sort of 30, 40 quid to buy it on its own, I reckon. But yeah, pleased to have it. Again, very thin, as you would expect from a magazine coming towards the end of its life. Next up is another final magazine, and this one is Amiga Action. Last ever issue. Championship Manager 2, I remember waiting for that game for flipping months. So by the time I got my PC and bought that, it came out, finally. But yeah, really pleased to have this. Capital Punishment, if I've ever played that before. Uh, this one set me back £21. I think this is issue... Christ, I can't even see that. A bit dark in this room today. Thing is, it's like red on black background, so I can't flip and see it. But yeah, so I picked up this one. I think I picked up another one, which was about 10 15 quid. Um, but as you can imagine, from about 90 five on I didn't really pick up magazines anymore for the Amiga so yeah it can be really difficult finding those and the best one the best one in the bunch is this one been after this one for bloody ages Amiga Power the final one now again I bought this magazine right up uh, and probably until again early 96 I'm missing about eight or nine Amiga Power magazines that's it for a full set unfortunately again no free game um, but this one cost me 50 quid, which is I think is a really good price. Saw it on eBay, offered the guy £50 for it, and he accepted, which was fantastic. But I've seen this go for sort of three figures before. I'm not sure if it's complete, the one I saw, but I've only ever seen it come up on eBay twice. So I'm really pleased to have that in the collection. So yeah, I don't just collect the games, I do like to collect magazines, I do like to collect um, some other bits and bobs as well. I'll just show you a couple of other bits I've picked up recently as well, in the drawer here. These store cards or these little strut card things got lemmings. It's pretty cool, actually. As a collector was selling off loads of stuff like this, he must have worked in a shop or owned a shop or something. But it's loads and loads of really cool um, pieces. Cool world. Again, I don't see. I can't imagine you see it very well through the bloody dirty plastic, but again, pretty cool. Um. One of my favourite bits of artwork on the Ocean Label is old uh, Rainbow Islands. So yeah, these were these were at least ten to fifteen quid each, and this was the most recent one I picked up. Cobra. See, so yeah, I keep an eye on this guy's shop because I do love this sort of stuff, especially Ocean Software. But yeah, so I thought I'd just show you those. Otherwise, I'll just sit in that drawer forever and I'll forget all about them. That's it. That's it for this pickup video. Like I said, I've got quite a bit more to show you. I'm getting some more Spectrum games, but they're sort of very um, slow in coming. I'm kind of picking up a lot of the later release Spectrum games, games that came out in 92, which again are quite hard to find. And quite surprising what games came out on the Spectrum in 92 as well. So I've probably got enough there for a couple of pickup videos for the Spectrum. Um, I've probably got enough now for a PlayStation pickup video, PlayStation 1. Um, I think I've got one PlayStation 3 game, that's about it. And the rest of it is ST and Amiga, so that's awesome. The modern game I picked up this month was Man of Medan, which is not a bad little game, probably not worth the £25, so it's, very, it's a very short game. And a lot of the, the problem with that kind of game is it, it kind of does a lot of the work for you. The only thing about it, it scares the shit out of me, because I don't like those sorts of games generally because of that. But yeah, it's a very short game, um, so it's probably one of those games you want to buy when it's worth about 5 10 quid. Shame really, but it's, it's good, it's just not a much of it. It does it, it does sort of baby you right the way through the game really. So that's it, so thank you very much for watching this video, thank you very much for subscribing, I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care, and bye for now.